Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's lovely to look out and see so many friendly faces and uh, people obviously interested in, in mission. So um, I'm really uh, pleased to be able to introduce uh, Joseph and Sally Camelli to you. Uh, they run the um, Cheptebo Rural Development Centre uh, in Kenya. Uh, Joseph is the centre director and Sally is the manager of the conference centre. Um, they've been visiting the UK for the last four weeks, experiencing UK weather, um, especially here in East Anglia, where we kept saying tomorrow it will be sunny, and today it is, so that's lovely. Uh, they've already been to Ireland and to Scotland, uh, meeting supporters at other churches. Um, I'm going to ask them a few questions uh, just to begin with, so that you can understand what an amazing place uh, Cheptebo is. Um, and then in a little while, um, Joseph will um, and Sally will carry on with uh, some other slides later on. So I'm just wondering, the first slide, yes, excellent. So, um, so this is uh, the Kerio Valley where the, the centre is. So um, Joseph, can you tell me, or Sally, exactly where um, Cheptebo is? I'm clicking, but nothing's happening. Is that me, or should I try now? Okay. Yay. There we are. Thank you very much, uh, Alison. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Cheptebo is in Kenya, as you see right there in the map. That is the map of Africa. We are in Kenya in the Rift Valley. Uh, when I talk about the Rift Valley, we are in the Kerio, a very rural community, 1,200 meters above sea level. Very dry, with very little rainfall. Thank you. Yeah, so that is uh, where we are in Kenya. CRDC is Cheptebo Rural Development Center. So we are right about 350 kilometers from Nairobi and uh, about 65 kilometers from Eldoret. That is our town. When you come to Nairobi, you fly to, Nair uh, to Eldoret, 45 minutes, and then you drive two hours to the Kerio Valley from Eldoret City. What you forgot to say, Joseph, was it's very hot. It's very hot for us. <laughs> <laughs> Not so hot for them. Yes. Um, so, uh, Joseph and Sally, why was the centre started? And Thank when was it started, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alison. The center was started back in 1986. The reason why it was started is the church, which is Africa Inland Church, wanted to go and preach the good news to the people in the Kerio Valley, this very remote area. But reaching there, they found out that people were really struggling. No food, water was a challenge, people needed some assistance. So the church thought of starting an agricultural demonstration. Therefore, the local community donated 20 hectares piece of land to the church. And the church requested for a missionary. And I'm glad that uh, you are supporting missionaries all over the world. Thank you very much. So they, they requested for a missionary. Was, was not working. Sorry. So, sorry. OK. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so uh, I say that uh, it started in 1986, and the reason why it started is because the church wanted to bring the good news to the people in the Kerio Valley, where the gospel had not reached. But reaching there, there were pe the people were struggling. Food, water, education, so many things. So the local community donated 20 hectares piece of land to AIC. And now AIC requested for a missionary to come and start this demonstration farm. And therefore Bill from Scotland came in 1986, sent by Africa Island Mission and supported by Tiafan. I was very impressed to hear that you are praying for Tiafan uh, this evening. So the first funding came from Tiafan that supported our project in the Kerio Valley. Thank you very much.
So um, your motto is um, serving the people by both word and deed. Uh, can you explain a little bit more what you mean by that, please? Thank you very much, Alison, again. Now, when we talk about serving the people both by word and deed, in the agricultural demonstration, we deal with the practical part. We have the tree nursery, we have the livestock section, where we teach the people on how they can do farming in their own homes. But that is not the only thing we do. We bring the gospel to them. So, as, 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 as well as doing the practical part, we share the gospel. So we have a chaplain there, employed by the project, who actually meets every group that comes. And as well as our staff are born again, they share the good news to the people. So every group that comes, they get the word, and they get the practical part. Thank you. Um, we've now got some like before and after photos. So um, these will show, the next um, six slides will show what life was like in uh, uh, the Kerio Valley before the project was started. And then in a minute, I'll show you something different afterwards. So would you like to tell them about, sorry, tell them about this? Thank you very much, Alison. As you can see, back in 1986, that is how the, the area was. Lots of soil erosion, lots of degradation, because people needed some knowledge on how they can conserve their soils. But look, our, this missionary from Scotland came all the way. Uh, the photo is gone. Sorry. It has gone somewhere. Okay. Okay. So you can see uh, right there, you can see a mud house. So that is the first house of the missionary. Very humble beginnings. He came down and actually became like the people there. And now you can see what God has done. You'll be very encouraged later on to see from the humble beginnings. You can now see what God has done. There is now food. There is a, a fruits in the, in, in, in the community, as you can see in that photo. Even the livestock are happy. You can see even that calf is jumping now. <laughs> so because life has actually come through the transformation of the gospel through this agricultural project. So we have a lot to say thank you, thank you, thank you Lord for what he has done in this project. You can see again that in that photo how the community was. That woman there wanted to get some milk. But you can see the cow was struggling because the cow had no feet, problem of water, but this woman wanted some milk from the cow. So she could struggle to get even a glass or have a glass of the water. But the same has changed. Through our project, we have actually educated the people and they have now improved their livestock. And some are getting 15 liters now from one cow. Praise the Lord because of that knowledge that we have given to the people. You, you can also see that the gospel of our Lord Jesus has brought hope and confidence to the people in the valley. People have actually realized that there is hope and there is life in Christ. You can see people visiting. Now, not from the area only, but they come even from the islands now, down to the valley, the place that was thought to be a low potential area, People from other places are coming to learn from our farm. Those are farmers, and that is our, our conference center. Sally can say something about the conference center. <laughs> Welcome, Sally. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. That is a conference center, and that is where I work as a conference center manager. We have five conference halls, and every year the Lord has helped us to train pastors or ministers. They come to our conference. We have different groups that they use the facility. We can have schools, we can have churches, we can have NGOs, and we really thank God that the, the project, the conference center has really helped the people. And we thank God that we have opportunity. Every group that comes in, our minister take like five to 10 minutes for every group to share the word of God. And people are very encouraged, and people are very happy. We are very unique because our center have 
prayers every day. Thank you. Uh, the man standing there is Bill Reti, 1980s, preaching the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. People were eager to listen to the gospel, even under three. Under three, people were really saying, let us go and hear from this Musungu. Musungu is a white person. So they were going to listen from the Musungu, this person who has come, this missionary. And people could actually hear the good news and be saved. But thank God that today, if you see the next slide, Sorry. we've gone to the next, you see that God has really brought transformation. You can see new building, you know, people who used to pray under the, the tree, we have now building, you can see baptism, you know, like last year in our local church, three baptism actually took place. And we really praise the name of the Lord to see, you know, people coming to the Lord Jesus, being disciples to know Jesus Christ and to follow Jesus and be baptized. And you can see our, our building is not only used by our members only. Even the schools from around, they come. They come for prayers. Students come. Pupils come. And they get opportunity to hear the good news of our Lord Jesus. So we praise the name of the Lord so much. So I think you can see um, that some of the initiatives that uh, Bill and Rosemary Retty and now obviously Joseph and Sally have put in place and uh, that's made this center the vibrant spiritual place that it actually is. So I've one last slide to show just at this, this moment and my question to them is, how has this transformation come about? I think you've probably guessed it, but how has it come about? You want to say something, Sally? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> I think, I think to, to be fair, um, we, 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 Sally's yeah, never I, quite I sure to be when fair, so, is so, that, so that I will not talk alone. <laughs> yeah. So as you see there, we actually say this is the Lord's doing. If you look back, today we went to Keith and Louise for lunch. Keith was there in 1988, a member of this church. And uh, we were looking at the photographs of 1988. And amazingly, you see what has happened today. You say, may the Lord take his glory. So we, it is actually marvelous in our eyes. It is not our doings. But whatever we, we have done, may the Lord take the glory. We say, take the glory, Lord. Because we have changed lives in the community. Maybe Thank to you. add on top of that, uh, we really thank God, uh, the community. We have like 100 children that comes to Sunday school. Every Wednesday we have Bible study in our house. Every Thursday, every Friday also we have a Bible study. We have a quite number of women in the church. And we've really seen the Lord. The transformation in the community. Most women used to do a lot of alcohol, brewing. But today, the Lord has really changed them. The Lord has transformed them. And we really thank God as a result of the project. So um, thank you, Joseph and Sally. Okay, thank you very much uh, again for the opportunity. Thank you for having us here this evening. It's a great privilege. This is our fifth time here. We came here the first time in 1997, and 2011, 2015, 2018, and now 2023. So you are our family. We really thank God for you. In Cheptepa, we have hostel named Sare Hostel. So, so maybe now we should change. <laughs> to city gate. <laughs> to city <gate> hostel. <laughs> so we really, we really, we are very happy to be here uh, this evening. Thank you very much. And we have also seen that the Lord has helped you. May the Lord bless you. We have seen growth here, and uh, we really pray that the Lord will continue blessing you. So we will continue uh, showing you some of the slides that uh, are here. Uh, we are actually looking forward to challenges. But before that, there is a slide that we missed. A uh, slide that we missed is about the charges. When Bill came in 1986, there were two small charges in the community. But today, 
25 churches have been planted in the community. We praise the name of the Lord for that. That is something that... It comes up in the next service. Oh, that is still coming? Yes. Oh, that is still coming. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This oh, 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 this different this morning. Thank you, Alison. So, we are having some challenges. And the challenges, one you can guess, is climate change, which might not be very real here, but it is very real in Africa, real in Kenya. That is a lake that was very close to our project, but it has dried com completely as a result of climate change. Now it is a reality in Kenya because the rainfall has become less and less, and the temperatures have continued to rise. And so that is a prayer. As we talk even now, people planted their crops a few weeks ago, and they got five days rain, and it stopped completely. So the other day I was in, uh, what do we call this? Uh, Anglia, Square. Anglia Square, and it rained a lot. And I took a video and sent it home. And, and they were saying, send us rain, send us rain. So pray for us because climate change has made our rivers to dry, including the river. Keith was a mess. That the river that used to bring water to the project has dried. So we are now going down to the boreholes. We are drilling boreholes. So that is a prayer that we need you to pray. We'll continue. Uh, food supplies and uh, you can see mangoes being sold along the road. From 1986, we have been promoting fruit production in the community. And now we have over 200,000 mango trees planted. And uh, you can see women who used to sell alcohol and brew alcohol are now selling mangoes along the road. And they get income. And those women are born again. They come to church, they sell, Monday up to, up to, up, up to Saturday, they, they sell along the road and they get some income for their families. That is quite encouraging that the project has actually brought that transformation to the community. Now, oh, that is, uh, Alison, you are right that it was coming. So that is the small church. When Bill came, I think it is uh, on, uh, the, the, you can see the iron sheet, uh, building there, small church. There were two small churches when Bill came. But there, on your, sit on your left or your right, there is a, a building now, but not only one. The Lord has placed us that the, char the churches have now grown to 25 new churches in the community. We say praise the name of the Lord. We praise the name of the Lord at least every year you can see, or every, or every two years, a church has been planted. And we really thank God for that. Today, we had 15 churches meeting today for a joint service. And uh, it was quite encouraging. We will get news later on in the evening how it was. So we, we, we really praise the name of the Lord for that. Many have heard the gospel and responded, but there are still others who have never heard. And we, we will continue spreading the good news, and we ask you to continue praying for us as we reach out to others to actually come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can see what God has also done. That is one of our charges in the community. 2016, they were sitting under a tree, and you will see a white person somewhere there. That was Alison Rima. And, and, and <laughs> And, and, and I think uh, David was taking the photo. So you, you cannot see David because he was taking a photo. So, but that, that, those are actually members of that church. They were actually sitting because they didn't have the building. But uh, we want to thank God that now they have a building that city gates are partly contributed. And we want to say thank you, thank you very much. This local church sent us with your greetings, with their love, and to say thank you to you for praying and supporting. So Citygate are partly funded that, uh, that church called Kiptendio, and we really praise the Lord for that. Citygate have been part of 
the work that we do in Cheptebo in Kenya. That is a young man called Victor Chuma. He's a young Kenyan, very hika. He loves the Lord Jesus. And uh, he had a calling to go to Bible college. And there was problem of finance. But the Lord opened their way through city gates. And he will be graduating in April next year. Praise the name of the Lord. He's very eager. Now he, he, he preaches. He can come and preach in our church. He preaches in the community. He preaches to the young people, to our staff. And we see a young man who is going to bring uh, uh, be a blessing. So thank you very much for being a blessing to that young man, uh, Victor Juma. My wife now can talk. She's the conference manager there. <laughs> you can say something there again. Uh, you can see up there, that is a conference. That's a conference center. I had said earlier that every year, the conference center does something called subsidy, mm -hmm. and we invite all our ministers to come for five to four to five days for a conference. And we have a minister from Infanes that normally comes to minister to them. So we really thank God that the conference center has been a blessings to our pastors. And also, it's not only pastors, also pastors' wives. They also come, and we give them opportunity to hear the word of God, to sit and to, you know, sometimes to relax and enjoy their meals. And we really thank God that the conference center can do that. We do it every year as the Lord blesses the work. Thank you very much. So, God willing, Pastor Andy will be coming out as the Lord leads in, in, in the near future. We, so, to come and be a blessing to our ministers. We usually get about 70 to 80 ministers for one week. So, if he can come and be a blessing, we'll be very happy to have him represent you there and be ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that is our agricultural uh, training and innovation center. Uh, for many years, we have been uh, carrying out demonstration for one day. Farmers come for one day and they go back home. One day, they learn in the farm and back home. But in 2016, we decided to start a school for the farmers. One week, one week course. And in that course, there is biblical principles. There is the word of God. And the farmers, after one week, they go home with agricultural knowledge and also the word of God. So since 2016, by the grace of the Lord, we have graduated over 2,000 uh, farmers from 2016. We praise the name of the Lord for that. So that is the farm. You can see uh, what the Lord has actually done. We have never remained in Jephtebo alone. We've also thought of reaching out to other areas. 50 kilometers to the north of Jephtebo is another very dry community with so many challenges. That place is called Cheglet. And uh, we have been praying. People came to Peel many years ago. Bill, bring us this project down here. When we came in 2018, we were speaking in a church in Northern Ireland. And we were telling them to pray for a missionary to come out. And God actually touched Paul and Elizabeth, that family that you see them. Elizabeth is a retired nurse, and Paul is a farmer. So they have come out, and they are now serving in that community, I think about two years now. And the Lord has really used them. Only within two years, they have a Sunday school of 90 children. And they have, a, they have planted a church of 30 members. And they have also started a small demonstration, you can see, in, in their farm there. And they have also built a small multipurpose training center for the farmers to come and learn. So pray for those missionaries, Paul and Elizabeth. They come from Northern Ireland. They sacrifice when the Lord said, whom shall I send? They say, here we are. They came out. So they have so many challenges so many challenges in that community. So I ask you to pray. Challenges of water, they need money for drilling a borehole, and many other things. People run to them for school fees, and they say we don't have you know, money for school fees, but they run to them. 
Some run to them for health issues because they are sick. They say, you are a nurse, treat us. They say, I don't have the medicine. So, so pray for them. That is, uh, I talked about drilling a borehole. So that is uh, a borehole that we use in drilling. And for your information, one borehole is costing 10,000 pounds to drill and to install solar system and piping. So pray that the Lord will, will luckily provide for the needs of these water challenging uh, problems in the community. Now my wife will continue there. Uh, and we really thank God for Citygate. They have been part of blessing our young people in the community. Not only the Fikta who is in Bible College, but there are some individuals in the congregation here. Some individual members in, in, in Citygate who have actually sponsored some, some children. And we really say thank you very much. So you want to say something, my, my wife there? Thank you very much. Uh, we want to say thank you so much for your prayers and your support. In Kenya, primary school is free. High school is not free. College is not free. University is not free. So we want to appreciate members who have been really able to support some of very needy children there. You can see some of them are total orphans there from a single mother with a lot of challenges from the community. We, had, we realized when Peel and Rosemary were there, missionaries, People from the community could go to them and say, we need school fees, we need some support. But when they left, then now we could realize how much people were going to them. They were coming even to us, though we work, like we have a lot of money, we need to support them. But we want to say thank you so much for supporting. From my left, you can see Vivian. She did a course in food and beverage. She's a chef. In the middle, Maxi is a photographer in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. On my left, that is purity. She's a teacher, technical teacher. Mm -hmm. In the middle is Sharon. She's hoping to join agriculture college, and we really thank God that she will get opportunity to do some practicals in the project. That girl is a total oven. On my right top, she's a nurse. And my right is a young man from the community. He's a veterinary. So I want to say thank you so much, Church. Thank you for sur surrendering I know you don't have that much, but you've really made these guys to be the way they are because of your prayers and your support. You, you've sacrificed a lot, and we really appreciate that. So we want to say thank you so much. And in case of anything you want to pray, you want to support anybody, maybe see Alison, and we want to say so much thank you for your prayers. These are only the few. There are so many, but these are the few that we can mention, and we want to say thank you, and God bless you for the good ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. So we are about to finish our presentation. This You can see happy children there. Happy children because of the gospel of our Lord Jesus. When Christ has come to our hearts, as Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it to, to the full. We really thank God for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Kerio Valley in this part of Kenya that has transformed many lives. Young, you know, from children, young people, elderly, that they now have, have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. We really thank God also for the transformation that people have something to eat, you know, unlike in the year 1986. So thank you very much. We, 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 we ask you to continue praying uh, for us. Those are the prayer points that we ask you to pray uh, God's uh, faithfulness over the many years, improved harvest, food and livestock, 25 new charges and many new believers, new projects, other areas, e.g. Paul and Elizabeth, please pray for them. Job opportunities, uh, challenges of climate change, growth of agricultural innovation training center, and reaching out for Christ uh, uh, through his servants. We pray for Victor Chuma, as he prepares to complete this course in April next year. So those are the prayer points, and I leave that one up. So, so thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. May the Lord bless you and be with you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Um, so uh, thank you, Joseph and Sally, um, for everything you've been able to explain this evening. Um, and I think, hopefully, you've understood the wonderful uh, transformation uh, that there has been in the Kerio Valley. Um, and I think it's wonderful to think that uh, people have been lifted out of poverty uh, and had access to the gospel and the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before we get into groups, uh, just to pray for a few minutes, um, they have a song, which I'm going to ask them to sing uh, for us now. So, if you don't Thank mind. Thank you. Before we sing, we bring you love and greetings from the church, from the project, and believers who receive them. Thank we are you. going to sing a song. Uh, it says that, we thank you, Jesus, for the many things that you've done. Just to say thank you, thank you, Lord, for what he has done. For your prayers, for your support, we just want to say thank you, thank you. And we will sing in our language, Kiswahili. Say, Asante, Asante. Asante is thank you, thank you. So we will also come to English at some point. <laughs> but uh, follow us when we say Asante, Asante is Kiswahili. Kiswahili what in Kenya. Asante is thank you, thank you. And in Kenya, we also like uh, clapping hands. So never mind when we clap hands. <laughs> asante, yes, oh, asante, yes, oh, asante, yes, oh, asante, yes, asante, yes, asante, sana, buona, yes, asante, yes, asante, sana, buona, yes, asante, yes, oh, asante, yes, oh, asante, yes, oh, asante, yes, Oh, Asante, yes, Asante, Sana, Buana, yes, Asante, yes, Asante, Sana, Buana, yes, Asante, yes, oh, we thank you, Jesus, oh, we thank you, Jesus, oh, we thank you, Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. We are leaving tomorrow, God willing, to uh, London. Uh, our friends David and uh, Alison have hosted us very well. So they are taking us to London tomorrow evening. We fly on Tuesday morning to Kenya. So pray pray for that, that the Lord will take us safely and uh, may the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. And welcome, 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 welcome. Join us, especially the young people. <laughs> young people, send the young people. They will never, never be the same. If they, if they will come for one week or two weeks, Pastor Andy, they will never be the same. We have seen some of the young people going into full-time ministry because they have come and be part of the work there, and they see the challenges, and they become closer to God even more. Thank you very much. <laughs>